as usual, we're still thinking about a consumer who's trying to maximize his utility subject to staying within his affordable set, that is, subject to his budget constraint. So here, I've written a budget constraint, which is a standard straight line that goes from this point to this point. So that's the budget constraint, standard straight line. But I've drawn weird indifference curves. Now, these aren't too weird. You still obey the more is better assumption. So when you go up and to the right, utility goes up. But these indifference curves don't have the standard kind of convex shape. They, they look like this. So they have sort of a hump in the middle of them. Actually, that's not particularly well drawn. Let me try that again. Because you have to you have to always be sure that these have a negative slope. You can't have any kind of positive slope to them. And the shape that I'd drawn before had a slight positive slope in the middle, which was incorrect. Incorrect if we're assuming monotonicity. That is, that the more x increases utility and more y increases utility. So in any case, there are an infinite number of these contour lines representing different levels of utility. And let's think about the problem that this consumer faces. Everything outside of his affordable set is totally irrelevant. I want to indicate some points here. Let's call this A. Let's call this B. Now, the consumer can certainly go to some point like this, but there's no reason to go there because he can achieve utility level at least a U naught, and and so uh, this lower level utility that that I just drew is not relevant. So if he goes to point B, he can achieve U0. Notice, though, that he can also achieve point A if he wants to. And point A gives a higher utility than point B. So he's going to want to do that. He's going to want to go to point A rather than point B. And so the optimal point in this example is A. Now, this general property you might have noticed, which is true for both this example and the more standard case that we drew earlier, namely this case, which is that the optimal point is a point where the indifference curve is tangent to the budget constraint. In the example that that I was talking about before, this um, this example here, that's the only point in the entire graph where there's a tangency between the contour line, that is the indifference curve, and the budget constraint. So if you're looking for a tangency, the tangency is exactly at this optimal point. In in the graph I started today's uh, lesson with, that's not the case. A is a tangency point, but B is also a tangency point. So if the only thing you were thinking is that the consumer goes to where the tangency where there's a tangency point between the indifference curve and the budget constraint, that would solve this situation, but it wouldn't solve the other situation because you'd still be left wondering, well, do you go to A or do you go to B? So that's why I introduced as the basic principle the idea that the consumer maximizes utility staying within his affordable set. That's the main principle. The tangencies, sometimes they happen, sometimes they don't happen. But the tangencies happen often enough that it's worthwhile writing down exactly what's going on at at a point of tangency. So at uh, at a point like A, e either or let's see, let me call this point, let me call this point C. So either at A or at C, either one, the optimal point is a tangency between the indifference curve and the budget constraint. So at a tangency, between the budget constraint 
I'll abbreviate budget constraint BC, and an indifference curve. The slopes of these two things are equal. In other words, the slope of the budget constraint is equal to the slope of the indifference curve. That's, after all, what tangency means. It means that the two things have the same slope. And if you wanted to, if you wanted to think what the slope uh, looked like, your point A, the, s the slope of the budget constraint is this, and the slope of the straight line is the same thing. Now we know from the mathematics that we worked out before what the slope of the budget constraint is, the, that is the left-hand side of this equation. But let's work it out again just to be sure. You have income equals expenditure. Income equals PXX plus PYY. Let's get that in the standard uh, form of a, a straight line so we can figure out its slope. So the way to do this is to subtract PXX from both sides of the equation. and divide by PY. Okay, I'm going a little fast because we've done this several times before. So this is in the form MX plus B equals Y. So M is the slope, so this is the slope. So that's the slope of the budget constraint. So I'll write that down. The slope of the budget constraint is minus PX over PY. The slope of the indifference curve, hopefully you remember that definition. The slope of the indifference curve is minus the marginal rate of substitution of x for y. And if you multiply both sides of this equation by minus 1, you get px over py equals the marginal rate of substitution of x for y. This is an equation that's only true at points like a and C. But those are interesting points. Uh, well, A, C, B, and C. A and C are interesting points. They're points where the consumer wants to go because they maximize utility. B is not actually an interesting point because the consumer doesn't go there. But B is also a point of tangency. So even at B, this equation is true that px over py equals the marginal rate of substitution of x for y. Now, if you don't have weird indifference curves, like I drew in the larger graph here, if you just have the standard kind of indifference curves that, you know, that, that we studied before, this, this kind, then you can just go ahead and look for a tangency, and wherever you get a point like c, this equation is going to hold, and that the, that ca that's a characterization of the optimal point. In other words, that's true at the optimal point and it, and, it, and it isn't true of any other point. But if you do have w weirder situations, like I drew in the bigger graph with A and B, then this, this uh, equation isn't so fundamental anymore because it's true at B and B is not a very interesting point. So what I've shown is that this tangency characterization, so in the, example, in the two examples I've done so far, is a necessary condition for the point to be optimal, but it's not sufficient. That's the way a mathematician would say it. Well, in the next lesson, I'm going to show that it's not even necessary, that there can be cases where you're at an optimal point and there's no tangency. And if there's no tangency, of course, then this equation is not going to hold at the optimal point.